Ellis. All right. My name is Mrs. Ellis. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Ellis. And I'm here to talk to you about water. Okay? So, I'm from an organization, the group that's called, called the New England Water Environment Association. All right? So I know that's kind of long. And so we're going to talk about each word and talk about what it means. Okay? So who knows what New England means? It's like the gathering of states. Perfect. And does anyone know which states are part of New England? That's a pretty hard question. So this is the group that I, I volunteer for this group. We're called the New England Water Environment Association. So what we do is we make sure the environment, and specifically the water environment, it's clean and healthy and available for everybody to use for all the things that you need to use water for. So that's what this presentation is going to be about. It's going to be about where water comes from, where it goes, what you use it for, and then the water cycle and how the same water just goes around and around on Earth and gets used over and over again and how it's important to keep it clean. Okay? So first we're going to talk about the water cycle. Yep, so I heard that in the other first grade too. That you guys already know the water cycle. So you should be able to answer these questions pretty easily. So you all know that water just cycles around and around. It's the same water. It's used over and over again. So when the water in the ocean goes up into the air, what is that called? Evaporation. Evaporation, right. And then when it turns into clouds in the sky, what is that called? Search of the sea. I think it's a neighbor. Does anyone know? Condensation. Condensation, right. And then when the water falls back down onto the earth from the clouds, that is? Rain. Rain. And there's another kind of fancy word for rain. Precipitation. Precipitation. Right. So, the water comes from the oceans and lakes and, and uh, rivers. It evaporates into the air. It turns into the clouds. And then it turns into rain or precipitation, snow, snow might fall on the mountains, and then the sun melts the snow, it turns into rivers, comes back down into the oceans. But one thing that we haven't talked about in this whole water cycle is people. So people are part of the water cycle too. Because we, we take water out of the environment, and we use it, and then we put it back into the environment, right? So it's really important that the water is clean when we use it for all the things we use it for in our houses, and then it's important that it gets cleaned again before it gets returned back into the environment so that it's healthy for people who want to use it the next time and for all the animals and everything that use water. Okay, so who used water today? Raise your hand if you used water today. All right, pretty much everybody used water for something. So I'm gonna go around the room it's okay if we say the same answers, but let's try to get as many different answers as we can. And I'm going to start from the back. We're going to go around to everyone, and I want you to tell me what you used water for today. Okay, so what did you use? Um, I used it to um, give water to my plant, and I drink it in gym. Brush your teeth. Okay. okay, great answers. So you guys all used water today. So water is really important. We can't live without water, right? Mm -hmm. We need water to drink. We need water to brush our teeth. This, this cutout of this house shows all different things you might use water for. You might use it to wash dishes in your sink or in a dishwasher if you have one. You use it to do laundry. You use it in the bathroom. And one answer that I'm surprised nobody said. In the other classroom, everybody said this answer. What do you use water for all the time that's kind of a little gross? No, not brushing. Is brushing your teeth gross? What do you do? Going to the bathroom. Yeah. Flushing the toilet. <laughs> so this is my toilet. And from now on, everybody who gives me a correct answer gets to flush the toilet. And don't worry, everyone in the class will get to flush the toilet before we finish. So, water comes into your house through pipes. Clean water comes into your house. It might come from a reservoir. It might come from a lake or a stream or from the ground, from a well. It comes into your house. It's cleaned before it gets there. You use it. And then what happens when you're all done using water? Where does it go? 
eventually all the water ends up back in the ocean or back in a river or stream or in the groundwater. But before it gets there, it has to go through pipes, like you said, and it goes to one of two places in those pipes. So from the pipes, it might go to what's called a wastewater treatment plant where it gets cleaned. Or some of you might have a tank in your yard that it goes to. Does anyone know if they have a tank in their yard? It would look, there would be a little vent in your yard that looks like this. They call that a candy cane vent. And there's a tank in your yard where the wastewater gets treated. Does anyone know what that's called? And do you know if they have? A septic tank, you're right. So who thinks they have a septic tank in their yard? Okay, yeah, a few of you. All right. So when the water is used and it comes out of your house, if you have a septic tank, it goes through pipes into the ground and out into your yard, and then it all goes into a tank, and all the heavy solid material settles to the bottom, and then you might have a truck come sometimes that pumps it out, and then all the other water goes out into your yard through a bunch of different pipes and does what's called percolates back into the ground. Okay? You guys say percolate? Percolate. Okay. And in, when it goes through the ground, it gets treated a little bit. The bacteria and any harmful things that are in the water get treated, and then that ends up back in the groundwater. Now, if you don't have a septic tank, then it goes out through bigger pipes called sewers. Sewers, okay. Sewers are big pipes. So sewers collect wastewater from all different houses. So the water comes down out of your house that you've used, goes into pipes in the street, and then it goes all down, collects all together, down big pipes, it flows downhill. Sometimes it goes through what we call pump stations where it gets pumped back up and then it flows downhill again. That's cool. Yeah, that's a giant, giant sewer. I don't know where that picture was taken, but it's a giant sewer. She's not a construction person. Yeah, the ones out here are not that big. They're probably about this big. <gasps> Some of them might be about that big. So when, when your wa wastewater goes into a sewer, it flows all under the streets and goes to a wastewater treatment plant. And this is the wastewater treatment plant in Boston. Does anyone know what this is called? Deer. So it was oh, Deer Island. Deer. But you said reindeer, that's close. I don't know what they do. Let's see it. <laughs> all right. Everybody will have a chance to flush, don't worry. So the Deer Island treatment plant gets the wastewater from all over Boston the Boston area and all the towns around Boston, most of them. And the water comes in dirty and it gets cleaned and the clean water goes back out into the ocean and the dirty water we'll talk about later goes into these eggs and then I'll talk to you later about what that turns into. So let's talk a little bit about wastewater. Wastewater is all the water that goes down the drain in your house and goes out into the sewers or out into your septic tank. So what do you think might be in wastewater? Besides just water. Yep. Like um, when you go to the bathroom or something. Yeah, that's a good answer. All that stuff that you flush. Here, let's see it again. Okay. What do you think? Crumbs. Crumbs, yeah. Bits of food and everything that go down your drain. Okay, you in the green? Soap, yep, from when you wash your hands or when you do your laundry. There's a lot of soap that goes down the drain. So wastewater is not just water, and what a lot of people think when they hear wastewater is that it's just water and poop, right? But it's not. It's all the stuff that goes down the drain. Hair might go down the drain when you're taking a shower. Dead skin. Yes, we have hair said bugs. My hair goes down the drain all the time. Dead skin when you wash your hands, comes off your hands. Germs. It's good to know what you shouldn't flush down the toilet. You really shouldn't flush anything down the toilet besides when you go to the bathroom and toilet paper. What are some things that you might flush down the toilet that you probably shouldn't flush down the toilet? Yep. Live fish. Live fish. Toys. Toys. What about baby wipes? Who thinks we should flush baby wipes down the toilet? You should not flush baby wipes down the toilet. They're actually really bad for the sewer system. How? What? 
Diapers. That's a good. That's a really good one. I'm gonna give you an extra flush for that. A lot of people think you can flush diapers down the toilet. That's a terrible idea. They're gonna all the things. So now that we know all the things that go down into the wastewater, this is what it looks like when wastewater comes into the treatment plant. It's called influent. Can everybody say influent? Influent. Okay. And this is what it looks like when it comes out of the treatment plant. And it's called effluent. Okay. Yeah, can everybody sit on their bottom so everybody can see? Okay. Need to sit down. Okay. So this is how dirty it is. Can everybody see coming into a wastewater treatment plant? And this is how clean it is when it comes back out. And this is what we call sludge. And that's all the dirty stuff that's taken out of the water at the treatment plant and goes into the giant eggs that we saw. If your, if your wastewater goes to Deer Island, it goes into these sludge digesters. That's what these are called. Now this is a really tricky question. Can anyone guess what we make from the sludge? We make something from it that people actually buy in the store. What do you think? Kitty litter. Kitty litter is a good, a good guess, but that's not it. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Awesome. Yeah. You already flushed twice, right? No, I So after it leaves a treatment plant, it goes to one of a few different okay. places. It can go to the ocean, it can go to a river, it can go back into the ground. Yeah, you said ocean. You haven't flushed it. There you go. So this is why it's so important that you don't put things down the drain that aren't supposed to go down the drain. Anything goes down that one. Only pennies can go down the Well, actually, any coins can go down but the real toilet. It's really important that you don't flush anything down the toilet that doesn't belong there, like chemicals, you know, an old can of paint, something that, you know, medicines, things that you don't need anymore. You should never flush those things down the toilet because those go to the treatment plant and then eventually, they go back out to the oceans and the rivers and the groundwater. Yeah, if you flush something bad down the toilet, you could step out in the ocean. You could if it made it all the way to the ocean through the treatment plant. Right, boating. So there are all sorts of things that you might like to do out in the environment, in the water. And so that's why it's really important that the water stays clean. And so as we talked about, it's the same water going around and around and around. And no one's making new water in a factory. There's not somebody creating new water for us to use. We have to keep the water clean that we have because it's all the water that we have. So, so when you use your water and then it goes back out into the environment, it has to be treated and kept nice and clean and then go back to the environment. Okay? Okay. And it's also important not to use too much water because you don't want to... A lot of water comes out of wells, out of the groundwater, and you don't want those to run dry. <coughs> and it's also very expensive and, and takes a lot of work to treat the water that comes to your house. So you want to be sure you conserve water, which is things like turning the water off when you brush your teeth. Who turns the water off when they brush their teeth? Okay, good. So that's a really good idea. Taking shorter showers. Actually, taking showers instead of baths saves water. Most of my life, I thought that everybody would over and over again. Well, they are. They really are. In fact, the water that you used to brush your teeth this morning might have been used by a dinosaur to take a bath. Oh. It might have been the same water because it just goes through the water cycle over and over again and, and through the human part of the water cycle and right back out into the environment and then it gets used again. So, does anyone have any questions? So, I'm going to talk to you about one last thing, and then I'll let you guys get back to your lesson. So, each one of you is going to get one of these to take home. I've left them with your teacher. Okay, it's a little bag from our group, NUIA, New England Water Environment Association. And Do I get a toilet? No, everybody doesn't get a toilet. Sorry. You get, 
A coloring page that shows the house where you use water and a coloring book about the Flo family. This is a water droplet family. It's a little boy named Dewey and his dog Puddles. And it talks all about his family and what they use water for. Dewey. Puddles. His dog Puddles should be a puddle. He's a water drop. They're all water yeah. drops. And then we've got stickers about ways to save water. Yeah. So these say, I don't waste when I brush my teeth. They tell you about stopping leaks in your toilet. And not flushing trash down the toilet like we talked about. Taking shorter showers and not wasting water. Alright, and another little sticker that says water's worth it. And then this cool bookmark that shows where your water comes from on one side. The water that comes into your house and shows where your wastewater goes on the back. So you guys are all going to get...